Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Today our project is going to be a Penn Senator 45 GLS. It's a graphite lever, lever senator. That's what the GLS stands for. And uh, we've had some requests over time about lever drag reels. So I thought we would take one apart now that it came into the shop. Thanks, Doug. And uh, we'll show you how this thing is put together, what the purposes are, how it differs from a standard uh, star drag reel and how to service it. So uh, before we get too far down the road, I, I use a parts basket. I recommend that you use one, uh, whether it's that or a magnetic tray or, or what have you. Uh, the second thing I recommend is kind of wearing a protective glove because you, uh, you never know what's inside these reels as you take them apart. And um, this reel uses a, um, a larger uh, screw for the handle. So it's, it uses the screw that comes with the, um, the 6 o wheels and larger. If you have one of these wrenches, uh, it's an aftermarket wrench available through mysticparts.com. It has the smaller one, which is most of the, uh, the pen reels, and then the larger one as you move up the center line and so on. But at any rate, we're going to take that handle off, and then we're going to take um, the um, lever drag assembly off. Now before you go too far down, uh, into the uh, disassembly process. You should get the schematic which shows you the breakout of all the pieces and parts. That's available at mysticparts.com. It used to be uh, penparts.com, but that, uh, that site changed a little bit. And that'll show a breakout of all the pieces and parts in the reel. And it's particularly useful if you kind of lose track of where you are with that, or if uh, for some reason you need a replacement part, you uh, have the part numbers and everything there as well. I just took the collar off and um, then there should be a C-clip underneath that. So uh, we'll, we'll take that off in a moment and um, then we'll get underneath this reel. Uh, actually I think I have to pull that out. Nope, we can get it here. There's a little bit of uh, dirt and corrosion there so I wasn't being able to see if it uh... now if you have a C-ring pliers those are a little bit easier if not just kind of hold to one side and apply the other then you can pull that uh, it's actually an E-clip not a C-clip because there was a little stud in the middle there uh, take pictures along the way on these if you uh, if you're doing this particularly for the first time you want to know where the um, where the pieces and parts came from so that's part one of this. The next part would be to remove the, the lever for the lever drag. So in lever drag reels, it actually pulls the spool in as, the, um, as you want to apply the drag. There's a through shaft here that puts pressure onto a drag plate. Uh, so when it's fu fully disengaged, you have free spool. You have what's called the first strike, which is a medium kind of a, a drag, and it's set by the drag adjuster knob. And then if you just depress the button and go to full strike, then uh, that's the max drag that you can get on the reel with the adjuster. So uh, you want to be aware of that, and uh, pay attention to how the pieces and parts come out off of that. So we have the adjuster uh, nut with a spring sitting in the cup. We then have the handle on top of that. And sometimes you can't get the handle off without taking the, the, uh, the ring off. So let's take the trim ring off. There's three screws that hold that in place. Now I'm going to lay those screws down first on my bench because I want to make sure that uh, they're all the same size. Sometimes the sizes vary. Uh, you could do that by looking at the, um, the schematic as well. It would tell you that that middle screw is the short screw that hangs lower and then we'll come to the, the other one should be the same as the outside perhaps we'll see so there you go so we have two long ones on each end we have a short one in the middle and once you do that then you can pull the rest of the drag assembly off and again just check make sure that uh, you know the orientation you can notice that there's a, a washer and a little collar metal collar that sits on top of that so those can go uh, into our parts basket. Uh, this is hard to, to mess up putting back in because there is the indentation here for the, uh, the double release. But uh, just note the orientation on that as well. 
And then we have the rest of the screws that go into the plate. Now these will be shorter screws. And I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm just going to make sure that all of these screws are the same length. So that as I go to reinstall, I know that uh, if there is an oddball one in there that I've covered it. So the lever drag was, uh, it's been around a while now. It's a nice alternative. It's kind of a set it and forget it type of a, a, a pass. And you'll just notice there that a, a screw that came out is a longer screw. That one goes in the, uh, to support the harness ring there. And it's not unusual to have different uh, lengths. So if you're not paying attention in your haste to, to get to fix a reel or, or service it, uh, you could be sitting there in a little bit of trouble with a screw that either doesn't go in all the way or one that doesn't catch because you're using a small screw where a longer one is involved. In this case we have three different size screws. The ones on the bottom are the medium depth screw. I'm going to assume this is a medium depth screw as well. So pay attention. Take pictures. It, uh, it doesn't hurt to uh, have a video, uh, whether it's on your cell phone, not, not necessarily a video, but a standing photo, uh, where they came out of so that you don't have to trust your memory. Particularly if you need a piece and a part and you're waiting on it uh, over time, then uh, it's always a good thing to, to do that. So just to re, uh, regroup here, the two medium sized belong here, the long one belongs up top in the harness, and the two shorter ones on each side of the, uh, the top bar. With that we can pull this off. You'll see that we have a main gear assembly underneath and then we have a spool assembly here as well. So let's do one at a time. Let's do the main gear side plate first. So I'm just going to set this off to a side for the moment. So we took the pieces off of here so that we could get the main gear out. And typically this is what you'll find in the main gear situation. There's lubrication underneath. In this case, uh, it looks like it's been around a while, so we're going to go clean that up and re-lube uh, re that. And then you have the, the other gear that comes out this way with a bearing sitting, I believe that's a bearing sitting underneath there. And uh, we'll just make sure that's all cleaned up. So I'm going to pull this side out. I'm going to grab a paper towel first. Now, if this was particularly um, uh, ugly looking grease, caked on, dried out, whatever, you might want to hit that with a, a general degreaser just to get it going, uh, like a WD-40 or something. Uh, this case is, seems pretty fluid, a little taffy-like, or at least uh, looks like taffy in consistency. So I'm just going to clean that up, grab the Q-tip and come around the side here as well. And clean up the, the main piece here. I'm just looking at the uh, the plate at the moment. Just for a little bit of guidance and what that is. And that's just uh, okay. Let's uh, clean the main gear. We're going to check the teeth here. Make sure that all of these are there. There's a little bit of stuff inside of them. So I'm going to take a little bit of a wire brush, in this case I think it's actually a fabric brush. Just go through those teeth, uh, pull out anything that might be obstruction. Sometimes you get a little sand or something worked in there. It's a good way to get that out. And then on the faceplate we have some grease as well. So let's go ahead and take that off. We have some tarnish. You don't need to be concerned about the tarnish. You could if you wanted to grab a piece of steel wall, come back in here. And you can see it pretty much cleans out it pretty quickly. But that's not a uh, that's not interfacing with anything on there, so you don't really need to worry terribly about that. Okay, so we'll take this then. We're going to put new grease on. So I'm going to use a pen precision real grease for that. This is manufactured by pen. It doesn't have to be pen's grease, but uh, just make sure that you get a nice sampling of the grease going on there. Okay, when we do that then. We can reinstall that gear. I just want to pull that up as we do this. 
there's an anti-reverse dog here so I just want to pull that up and out of the way just gonna use a little pin for that and there we are now we're set we're not set This little pin of mine in the shop here is, uh, there we go, now you can hear it uh, clicking now. Okay, and then we just want to uh, get to this second part, which uh, is also a gear. You want to clear out the channels and that, do the same thing. Just grab the, the fabric brush, come on back through there. And I'm not noticing any, any dirt or anything, so uh, we're good with that. Just a little bit of blue grease on that will take care of that piece that goes in as well and then we can oh, I just knocked the any reverse out silly me and all I'm doing is levering that that drag to see the, the piece and then we can uh, we can work with that I'm still not set Got it back again. We can put the handle assembly back on now. We'll hold that gear in place. And remember, we had a Teflon washer for that. Just make sure that's cleaned off. And we have the E clip. So that's all you all you need, and the only reason why you would take the handle off of this reel is to make sure that you've serviced the gear and that you've got the junk in uh, cleaned out from behind. Once you do that then you can grab a pliers or make sure it's in the track. Sometimes you can press them on by hand if you don't have the hand strength that's where the pliers comes into play. And there you go. So we're back in now and that gear is held in place so I don't have to worry about it popping out again. So we're going to just take that gear and set that over to the side. But before I do, I'm just going to put a little bit of that lube around the main, uh, the pinion gear and the main gear just to make sure that it works itself in. All right, and we're, we're good and we've got that uh, working there. I'm going to set the handle back in here so I don't lose it. I'm going to set the gear plate off to the side. Let's go over then to this piece, which is the spool. That's the business end. There's really nothing going on back here. Uh, all you might want to do is put a little bit of blue grease onto the click uh, tongue. But there's nothing here. That's just the channel where that back piece sits. Uh, and this is your back piece that I'm referring to there. I have those side plate screws sitting here. So before I get nervous, let's take those off and put them in the bucket. Now some people I know put them in little plastic bags just to keep them separate. Uh, something like this, right? Uh, this one's got a part in it, but uh, we'll just pretend that I'm not some people. And you know that all of your side plate screws are in there. So whatever your, your system of organization is, uh, all of those are, are good in that regard. And uh, I would just recommend that that's the, the nature of how you want to go get this done. So the spool has a little protective covering on it. It's marked by three T's. I imagine there's a tool for this, but they're tabs. TTT is tabs. And what I've found most of the time is if I use a thin bladed screwdriver and just kind of slip it between the plastic uh, cover and the case, I can pop those tabs. There goes one. And that's, that's how I get it off. I'm not sure if that's the official way of doing things, but it's simply a plastic cover with the three tabs. It's not screwed like some of those others uh, that you'll find are. Some of the others have a, um, a, uh, a hand grip kind of a screw thing, but in this case uh, it doesn't have that. So uh, that's the part that uh, matters here. I'm going to take the shaft out. I'm going to take the clutch 
it's played out. This has this is the drive plate. It has the uh, drag washer on it, and then we have a smooth surface on this side and a ball bearing underneath. Uh, some some of the stuff I do is a little bit unconventional. I'm going to try and find my my little tool for uh, removing the bearing. It's here somewhere. What it really is is it's my um, just a, a little wrench that I bent. Here you go. So it's a, a pen reels wrench with a little hook on it, and if you just hook that behind the bearing. Most of the time you can pull that out. Oh, I gotta take this one out, I'm sorry. Uh, so you'll see it here. And that's how I just kind of pop the bearing on that. In this case I'm going to remove the, the plate here. There's four, four screws on the plate. In this surface I'm just gonna leave the parts on the bench. I know most of the time I'll tell you to put these things in the parts basket, but we're going to just clean these up and put these right back together again, so I'm just going to leave the parts right there. These screws, I think if you lost one, are the same screws as the Jigmaster side plates, but uh, don't lose them. Easier said, but I know that from time to time we get, get in situations where we knock things off of the bench and can't find the pieces again. These can be ordered. The parts can be ordered through penparts.com. And uh, go ahead and, and do that if you uh, if you need that. Okay, now I got the plate off. We're clean inside there. I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can't pop that bearing this way. I almost have it. Okay, so we have the burring back. These are sealed burrings. So what you want to do is just uh, apply some oil to these, or you can, uh, you can put some blue grease on them. The sealed burrings, I kind of like the, the notion of the, uh, the oils. Just going to let those flood in there. And make sure that the cavity is cleaned here. I'm use a paper towel for that and just kind of move it around there. We insert the bearing. Ah, you know what? Okay, well we had a little excitement losing that bearing on the side, but I've, I've put the bearing back in. I've also secured the, uh, the metal plate. I'm not quite sure where I stopped the camera, so we'll just assume that I was in the process of doing this. Uh, got the bearing, put it in. It's actually still coming out. And then I've mounted the spool here on this side, and we can go back now and actually put this into the, the carrier. And just remember the orientation there. Now we want to go service the drag. There's a little bit of loose grease on there. Let's go ahead and put some Cal's Universal Drag Grease on there. And those of you that uh, watch the video know that uh, I have a gloved hand and I love smearing the, the drag grease on it. So get that drag grease all around there. And then take a paper towel and kind of wash it, wipe off the excess. And I've reinstalled the bearing here. I'm not sure if I reinstalled the bearing when the uh, camera stopped before as well. Make sure that that's nice and lubricated and we did that before as well. All right, then the spring goes on to the shaft. The drag assembly goes on. And then we have those tabbed assemblies here. So it's just a matter of finding those points where the tabs are and uh, pressing them in. And I don't have the hand strength that I wish I did have some days. So you're battling the spring in here as well. So we're good to go now. All right, so we have that T. I don't know if I explained that on the last time when I put the spool in. There's a T groove in the back here, so that sits in here. And you gotta make sure you align or you won't be in with that spool. You go grab some uh, some grease, put that on the shaft here, and go over to the business end here. Now I like to sit this in to this side because it's a little tough to, to try and mate it the other way. Just hold that inner ring and get it seated. Once you do that, you can grab the rest of the side plate and align it. The key to aligning is looking for the, the spot down here. 
and then it should simply snap in place, which it's done. Back to those screws, remember we put them in the bag. We go grab those screws out of here, and of course there's a couple of miscellaneous parts, just because I was showing you with some folks too, those miscellaneous parts don't belong to this reel. As a matter of fact, it's from a broken bail arm that was replaced. Uh, there is no value to that. Remember what we had, we had a long one up top. So we'll go reinstall that. Now I like to get them started. I don't like to drive them all the way home just so that I, uh, I don't risk having a, uh, a warped side plate. So I leave it about a quarter of a turn short of being snug. And now we know we have the two medium sizes off of here. Now if you got confused, if you didn't take pictures, uh, you can always go back to that schematic and see which ones go where. In this case, I think my mind's still working. Although after uh, popping that bearing to the floor, I'm not quite sure if it's working that well. But uh, regardless, uh, again, I'm going to snug this one now because I've gone north and south. So I'll finish the turn on this. I'm going to put the one on the other side before I finish the turn on the one up top. And then we'll just have the two smaller screws uh, to place in there. So some folks ask uh, about you know, using mechanical screwdrivers. I don't like to do that. One, I enjoy working with my hands, even though I have trouble with small parts from time to time. The other, I'm, I'm, I don't like the torque on, the, uh, on those screwdrivers. They, they're heavily torqued. I'm going to finish that one now. And uh, that leads me to concern about whether I'm going to uh, break the side plate or have a uh, unnecessary tension on uh, the pieces and parts internally because uh, one was grabbed versus the other. So uh, I stay away from them. I would tell you if you need them, that's fine. Uh, just leave that final turn, that, that quarter of a turn there. Leave that off. Leave it shy. Uh, and then finish the turn by hand if you can. That way the uh, you don't risk over torquing the, uh, the screws. Even though sometimes uh, there's a convenience factor there. Okay, we're just down to the accessory points and putting that lever drag assembly back on. So the next thing up is to put the trim ring on and the adjuster arm. Now because of that slot that we had mentioned earlier, the uh, adjuster arm needs to go over it first. It's not being held on by anything, but over it. And then you can line the three tag ends of the metal so that it sits nicely like that. Back to the screws that we had in our case. There's two long and one short. If you swing the lever arm out of the way, you can put that short one in, which will, is in the middle, so you know you've got an even distribution there. You can tighten these down. There's no, uh, no risk here of any kind of over torque. And then one of the long ones goes in each side. coming to the end of this. So this is, it's, it's more uh, of a project than working on a particular uh, conventional reel because of the extra components, because of the burrings there that need to be oiled, because of the axle shaft assembly that comes out. But at the end of the day, it's not something that you can't do by yourself with a little bit of confidence. So uh, all lever drags are pretty much this way. Some have a little bit different uh, approach in terms of the the metal drag plate versus the, um, the, the drag washer, but for the most part they all are the same kind of engagement here. So I would tell you don't, uh, don't fear that uh, you're going to do something incorrectly. Okay, the spring goes on to that, um, the adjuster knob, and then that gets screwed in. And we'll come back and we'll play with that in terms of the tension. In a moment, but first we'll put the handle on. So there's a little collar that went over the handle. The handle goes on. Just like every other pen reel, you want to oil that gear sleeve. You saw the uh, when we took apart. There's a little drip hole there that uh, will keep that oiled internally. Now we're going to put the handle screw back on. 
at the risk of me calling it a handle nut. It is a screw with a uh, kind of a nut cap to it. And then you want to align the indentation in that cap nut with the, uh, the hole in the handle so that you can use your set screw. And this is where I usually tell people go for coffee uh, because me and little parts take a while to get together. Let's see how well we do it this time. I wouldn't be part for the course if I didn't, uh, didn't drop that piece a few times. But we always get it, just a little bit of patience. I would think there would be a simpler way. I've got a lot of different comments from a lot of different folks. I use greases, use magnetic tips. Doesn't Magnetic tips don't work on stainless screws, but I appreciate all of your input. And me, it's just uh, a little practice and patience, I guess. Eventually, I do get it. And it looks like eventually is now. So I'm just going to put that last piece in here. that down there we go. and uh, that's it so when you release this way your spool will spin freely as you increase the drag arm you'll notice that we now have tension on it and when you push through the button you'll have full drag and uh, so that's it very simply you, over here you throw you've got your line to let out first hit you've got tension but you still still have drag you can adjust that with this knob if you want more and then the last one is full on drag so uh, that's it that's the pen uh, senator gls 45 lever drag system uh, i appreciate your patience and watching me find uh, lost pieces and parts on the floor uh, that being the bearing uh, i hope you've enjoyed the video and if you did please like it if you want to see more please subscribe this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Thank you for watching.